Good afternoon, every everybody. Or good good evening, actually, almost now. And welcome to the final session of this particular vlog now on on day two, with the theme of uh, career focused education. I'm very pleased to be able to present a whole panel of ladies now from Coventry University, who are going to be talking about pathways through the pandemic that support employability in the classroom and beyond. So we are very, very pleased to have with us this afternoon, Barbara Howell, Barbara Tully, Dr. Hannah Yakovenka, and apologize, uh, apologies if I, I, I mess up with the pronunciation, Professor Chukanlaya Sawang. My name is Mark Wilson. I'm here just to moderate. I work for Pearson. I'm normally based in, in Spain and I'm a regional development manager for all, our, uh, for all our international qualifications and resources. Just a little bit of housekeeping now um, before we begin. I will be looking and monitoring the chat box. So if any of you have any questions, feel free to put the questions whenever you want in the chat box and we'll pick up as many as we can in the few minutes that we we'll leave at the end of this session specifically for your questions. You'll see in the chat box there are some little dots there if you want to share your questions with the wider audience with all the attendees just click on that option if you just want to send them to us then that's fine too. Okay so I'm going to leave you now in the hands of Barbara and Barbara yes. and Hannah and Sukhanaya, enjoy the session. And we're looking at your questions at the end of the at the end of the session now in half an hour's time. Thank you. Oh, oh thank you very much, Mark, and and thank you very much to Pearsons on behalf of Coventry University for inviting the team to present today on pathways through the pandemic that support employability in the classroom and beyond. And thank you all for for staying for this last session. I don't know what time it is, whether it's the afternoon, evening, or in your different time zones, but thank you very much. I'm just gonna give you a quick snapshot of the presentation. So we're gonna start with a video that describes some of the activities that have taken place during the pandemic. We thought we'd be helpful to provide you with an overview of the Coventry University group, uh, what its constituent parts are, we thought also that you should understand about the role that our collaborative partnerships have played and, and what collaborative means to Coventry University. We're going to describe the educational pathways, and I've seen several through the Pearson's presentation, but this is the, the Coventry version. We also have three pillars that we believe support employability and transferable skills. So I'll be describing those pillars. We also believe that Talent Connect and our talent team play a key role in the uh, student journey to careers, and we'll talk a little bit about those. And finally, we'll end on our uh, Coventry City of Culture video to give you a flavour of, of what's happening or might happen this year. I have to obviously start by telling you some of our accolades. Uh, so Coventry University secured gold award in the UK for the teaching excellence and student outcomes framework, TEF, TEF, and was awarded the Queen's anniversary prize for higher education in 2020. Some other examples that are not on the screen are that we've been shortlisted for University of the Year from the Times and Sunday Times Guide 2021. Um, in addition to the five QS stars for international, we actually received five QS stars overall 2020, so that's great news. And finally, uh, Coventry University is ranked first in the Midlands amongst, amongst the modern universities for the Guardian University Guide 2021. But let's, let's go on to something um, more exciting about our commitment to our communities video. We play a key role in helping the National Health Service um, and many of our students have been on the front line. We also have a COVID test centre and again our, our students have helped us uh, testing other students and staff and the public more broadly. 
I've been so proud of our staff and students that have joined the front line of the NHS at such a challenging time for everyone. I can't thank them enough for what they've done and continue to keep doing. We also know it's been a very difficult time for the school children and their parents. Our work with City has made a really positive difference for both pupils and the volunteer mentors in schools. The benefits are twofold because the volunteer mentors are developing skills for the future and, and to go into jobs whilst making a, a really, really important difference to a young person's life at the same time. Many people have obviously been working at home and we want to support them with a, a toolkit and support for their health and well-being. important difference to our local community, students and staff at the university. This year they had over 1,500 participants on their programmes. They've helped set up 34 startups, 15 of which were social enterprises. So that's 15 organisations that are helping to tackle some really important social challenges locally and globally. We'll be showing you a little bit more about the city of culture at the end of the presentation. So what does Coventry University Group look like? I think it's also good to go back to the roots. Uh, Coventry University has a long tradition of providing education. Um, with its roots dating back to Coventry College of Design in 1843. So actually a couple of years ago, we celebrated 175 years. We became a, a university or gained university status in 1992 alongside many other uh, polytechnics. But since then, we've worked tirelessly to become a global enterprise, establishing multiple campuses and initiatives across the world, including the Coventry University Group. So the Coventry University Group is an umbrella term, um, and it describes the various locations owned and governed by Coventry University. So all of these locations offer uh, qualifications that are validated by Coventry University. This means that if a student graduates from any of these locations, they get a Coventry University award. But not all locations offer all of the programmes. So, for example, Coventry University London offers bespoke programmes in finance, business, fashion and tourism and offers first class facilities in a great location in the centre of London. It also boasts a dedicated postgraduate centre and financial suite. We then have CU London, CU Scarborough and CU Coventry that offer more vocationally based courses with flexible learning options with no examinations at the end. So they aim to provide high quality learning solutions which allow students to fit study around work and other commitments. In addition, they offer slightly lower tuition fees uh, comparable to similar institutions. The entry requirements also vary between the CU Scarborough, et cetera, and CU Coventry and London. But students can move between the various campuses. So, for example, they could study for one year in Scarborough and then choose to go to London or Coventry University in the second year, depending on their programme of study. We also have new provision in Poland, uh, which offers a similar experience to CU Scarborough. So vocational qualifications with, with no exams at the end. And we believe this is a great opportunity for those students who may not be able to get a visa to come in the country. At the moment, they can't fly into the country or something that's slightly more affordable in terms of not having to get accommodation or pay necessarily the fees of Coventry University. We also believe that it provides flexible learning. So they could spend a year in Poland and again move to Scarborough in the second year and then Coventry University Coventry in the final year. 
So great, flexible, bespoke learning opportunities that meet student needs. We'd now like to tell you a bit about our collaborative partners. Uh, we have two, two definitions, two types of partnerships. The first are our transnational education partners and they're highlighted in yellow. So those partners offer either validated programs through Coventry University, or we franchise a program to those partners. The second group of partners highlighted in purple are progression partners. So those partners deliver their own programs, but offer pathways to programs at one of our campuses, either in the second year, final year or postgraduate. And those highlighted in orange are both collaborative and progression partners or the location of those particular partners. And again, we believe this offers the flexibility that students might need today. So some students we suggested may want to stay studying within their local community and with one of our collaborative partners before they transfer to Coventry uh, due to COVID or they could choose to move around maybe from one partner to another, depending on the programme. We have a great example in Cairo, whereby the institution offers exactly the same programmes as we do at Coventry. So students could study there for a couple of weeks, a semester or a year, and then come to Coventry. Equally, our students can go to Cairo. So we hope we've got bilateral agreements that we can go either way and give the students a great learning opportunity once we can all fly. So pathways through to employability. I've heard some great presentations yesterday and today and, and some interesting terms like the Transnational Express, where you can opt in, opt out of programmes. Uh, that was Mark actually, our, our chair today mentioned Transnational Express. I know that Jane Baker talked about the stackable learning, uh, step on, step off. So yes, um, this we hope is the Coventry's graphical representation of the stackable learning and the Transnational Express. You can study uh, one year in, in, in a, on a Pearson's qualification and then transfer to the second year at Coventry University or one of the partners around the world or you could just choose to go out and work for a year, step off, step back on. Or you could complete two years of a person's qualification and join the third year of the degree or one of our many top-up programmes. Or you could choose to study in another institution and join a master's programme. The journey continues. It could continue into placement or internships. These could take place between the second and third year. And all our employment, all our programmes are employer engaged. So we hope that some of our employers like Jaguar Land Rover um, provide speakers, uh, support the students in their learning, um, come to workshops. We also provide them with continuing professional development. And we think that's great for our academics because they're fully understanding what might be needed in the workplace and that can translate back into the programmes. They also help design our curriculum personally. So students then would graduate, but the journey has not ended there. We hope that our vibrant alumni network will return to either give speeches and talks as a, as a, a key employee, or we hope that they might join one of our master's programmes or get involved in many of the events that take place um, around the world that support our alumni network. So I talked at the beginning about the three pillars. The first pillar, the central support mechanism we have in place. We have two groups, the Academic Writing Centre and the Sigma Math Centre. Students can drop in, they can book appointments, they could join one of the group sessions, or they could use the many resources. But again, due to COVID, much of that has been put online so the students can gain access through virtual mechanisms. We also know that students have, have struggled, uh, some of them have struggled in, with isolation. They may have been on campus, 
in halls, they may have been overseas. Um, so we have great support from our mental health and wellbeing centre to get them through that difficult time of COVID. Equally, we have two learning through simulation centres. The first one is the, the uh, business simulation suite, which supports undergraduate and postgraduate business students. They can go through simulation games, role play. So for example, they could set up a boardroom or a control center and simulate what that, might, that experience might be. We also have a simulation center which is one of the most advanced interactive people training centers in the UK. Within that center, we could establish a building site or an oil rig disaster, and we can implant actors who can interact with either students or employees who may choose to do a continuing professional development activity. And we give them stimulating problems to solve. The second pillar is the Centre for Global Engagement, and I'm delighted to say that we've been first in the UK for international experience um, for many years now, and that's based on the HESA data 2018, where over 5,000 students have undertaken an international experience. Unfortunately, as we know, some of those practical real experiences are happening right now. So we also have other experiences which we describe maybe like an underground system. Students can go on the underground and, and drop in and join a language program so they could choose to study one of 30 languages. They then might choose to hop off that particular underground and join another tube and go on one of our virtual mobility trips. Currently, we have a virtual world tour which has traveled around 25 countries. Now the students don't have to go to all the 25 countries, but they could choose which of those they want to go to. 822 students participated in that experience and 603 students joined them from our partner network. So that gave them a real true intercultural experience. What we've also done is replace some of the real trips with collaborative online learning projects. Now this means that our academics develop a project with a partner university and the two students, two sets of students meet virtually to solve a problem, to discuss a problem, to work out some practical solution together or bring together the information that they've gained independently. And we had 2,278 students engage in those COIL projects. Students may also want to prepare themselves to be future leaders so they can join our Global Leaders Programme. And we've had 2,084 students join the Global Leaders Programme uh, this year. And finally, we used to have a vibrant global summer school. So, so students would come to Coventry and, and enjoy the city and look at the culture around the environment. They may also do some academic study in any of the academic discipline areas. Unfortunately, again, we've had to, to remove some of those practical trips, but we have replaced them with some excellent virtual global summer schools. So if you want to find out more about those, please do go on our website. And the final pillar, the talent team. So students can, can study a variety of advantage modules they're generally mandatory in the undergraduate programmes, so they're worth 10 credits in each of the three years. And they can choose modules associated to enterprise and entrepreneurship. The talent team also provide excellent support for CV writing, job applications, and, and a mock assessment centre to prepare the students for some of those difficult tests they have to do to get these particular jobs. Again, we know that some of the fairs that used to operate were very supportive of students finding a job. And we have put our career fairs online. So I'm also pleased to note that 
one of our uh, virtual career fairs attracted 3,455 bookings with 44 sessions and 40 employees. Uh, to name drop IBM um, as one of the examples of one of the employers. I'd also like to note that 600 students have worked in CU via our Future Works since September 2020, and we expect a similar number to continue in the following year. We've had 32 students work on, working on the COVID vaccination programme from a talent pool of 140. And finally, the internships. We've been offering internships through virtual mechanisms, and we've had 292 students carry out credit bearing internships in London in September. This year, 80 of 120 have chosen to do so, um, and they've already been placed. So that's excellent news. Particularly when I heard uh, Jane talking about uh, the job situation and how many of these jobs are disappearing. So now if we look through the lens of our, our talent team in a little more detail, I'm gonna see if I can uh, make these bigger. So in terms of the circle for the student support, I've talked about uh, the graduate toolkit. I've talked about the um, internships during COVID. Uh, the career fairs that have been put online. We also offer mentoring support and the international mobility that has been replaced with virtual activities. But now I'd like to talk in a little bit more detail about Talent Connect. So what is Talent Connect? Talent Connect is a platform that enables the students to interact throughout their career journey so they can book appointments they can sign up for workshops they can manage their job applications and equally employers would log and post particular jobs that are there and available for the students but more importantly it's enabled us to be really agile really understand the student journey understand exactly um, what they're applying for, what they're interested in, how well some of the events are taking place. So for example, I have an update on the figures that you can see in front of you. We've now had 8,461 students registered and active. We've had 7,590 career meetings booked. We've had 3,759 work opportunities on the system. And we can see from this particular dashboard, you know, you can see if students attend, they finish, they cancel, or they miss a meeting. And we can find out how engaged they are. So this is just one particular dashboard. There is many different variations and various different information that we can bring to bear to understand what's working well and what's not working quite so well. I've given you two examples. One example of a, an event that's taken place was the Get Ready, uh, Get Graduate Ready, which took place in January. And I, I'm pleased to note for that event that we had 150, 1,000, sorry, 1,500 registrations, but 5,000 turned up for the event. Um, we'll find out a little more in March for the Master Your Future. But the talent team doesn't stop there. It's also very important that we focus on the, uh, oh, sorry about that. It's now moved on when it shouldn't have done. I was trying to be clever and not quite so clever. Uh, we now move on to the employer perspective. I was talking to some colleagues in the talent team and they're explaining that one of their recent presentations to Wellmott Dixon uh, supported the whole circle of activity from virtual internships, apprenticeships, continuing professional development to skilled graduates. So it's very important for our talent team 
to having have similar conversations with the employers that we serve. So you, you got a, a brief uh, shot of our uh, um, final slide. We'd now like to present something about Coventry UK City of Culture. This is the city where movement began. We have transformed raw steel into racing machines. We move every heart, turning flames into hope and ruin into beauty. Two tones into one voice. We are young minds and curious eyes. Boundless energy will move us forward as timeless words are made new on city streets. A million and more journeys begin here. The power to move is always in our blood. Coventry moves. UK City of Culture 2021. Thank you so much for staying with us today. Um, again, it's moved on by itself. I'm sure it's not me. Um, if you enjoyed that video and you want to see a little bit more, we've got a selection of videos from the various faculties and also Coventry University London. And I believe this uh, presentation will be shared with you and you'll be able to click on those particular links. But I do hope you've been very active in, in the chat room and we've got lots of questions to answer. And, my panel of great colleagues are on standby to respond. Or maybe if my colleagues have anything that they think that I've uh, missed. But thank you very much. Could I, could I just say, Barbara, thank you very, very much for, for that. And, and your colleagues have been doing a, a fantastic job actually answering <laughs> quite a lot of the, the questions um, as, we've been, as we've been going along. But I think some of the other questions you've actually answered them, for example, people are asking about dropout rates, especially in these current times, and how uh, you've organized things to try to avoid that. And I think actually a lot of the things that you've been concentrating on today have been fantastic examples for other institutions maybe to, to replicate or, or to adapt actually to, to make people, to keep them engaged and keep them very much on 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 board there's just a couple of things that if i could just uh, throw in now just right at the very end uh, maybe want to take offline but somebody actually was saying how can an institution join the coventry university group you talked about the different sites scarborough poland etc um is that something that you would just like to to take offline or or maybe the the person could could write directly to you at one of the emails maybe in the end of the at the end of the slides would that be a, a good solution there Either. Yeah, we I, and, yeah, and we good. also was... have provided the link to the clear process uh, and I think I did reply to everybody, I did correct myself, so there is a process of how to become a partner, so I hope people will pick that up um, in the chat room. The, the easiest way if you uh, email Jasmine, just to drop an email to Jasmine and saying, you know, your institution's keen to um, do something with us and then and then we can go from there. That's the email from Jasmine on the slide, last slide as well. Perfect. Okay. Well, well, thank you very much. Unfortunately, we're just about out of time. I can just say personally, I've really, really enjoyed it. Quite a lot of memories there. Coventry and Scarborough, two cities that for different reasons I've studied in Coventry and I've had my holidays in Scarborough. So I can certainly vouch for them being very, very entertaining and interesting, interesting towns or, or, or cities. So as we wrap up this, this afternoon, I'd just like to thank all the attendees who We've stayed on uh, all afternoon, or maybe you've just come specifically for this session. I hope you've you've got plenty of things to to think about, things to take away, discuss with with colleagues. For those of you that are going to be back tomorrow, we are going to be talking more about online learning in the sessions tomorrow morning. If you are or colleagues are signed up for that, and will still still want to, if the sessions are still open, thank you very much for for attending. Hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you, ladies, for that really excellent presentation. And uh, yeah, hope you all have a, a good evening now. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Thanks. Bye-bye. Thank